Hey guys, back, another video, and welcome to this month's Cringe of the Month. Give me a second. Okay, I'm up. Um, I'm, the reason it took a few seconds, hold on. That's about 2K music on my video, I, I get a strike. The reason I was doing that is I thought this was still in the living room, and I was looking for it. Uh, no matter what, I was planning to do that uh, intro for Cringe of the Month. Anyway, this month's cringe of the month. But first, let me get this out of the way. Feliz Navidad! Merry freaking Christmas! God, has this year sucked! Anyway, this... Because it is Christmas... Um, well, when this comes out, it'll be Christmas. I'm recording this... Um... Christmas Eve. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah days. Um... Why not talk about a classic Christmas movie that I wanted to pick? I want to pick apart. Frosty the Snowman. I feel like everyone has seen this movie. The first one, at least. Then there's the Ungodful sequels. I'm not kidding about that. Frosty the Snowman is a franchise of sequels as well. It's not just the classic uh, movie we no we probably all grew up with. I'm not going to talk about the sequels. I'm going to talk about the original movie. Starts out with a narrator telling us how the a magical snow being the first snow of Christmas, first snow of December, or winter falling on Christmas Eve, um, is a very, or just Christmas, is a very magical thing, and it really is, especially if it could happen to fucking day. Cause what's Christmas without being a white Christmas? It sucks. It doesn't feel like Christmas. Um, the kids at this school who. <laughs> Or standing out the window, learn that their teacher had this jack off, horrible ass magician, to entertain them. I'm just saying this when your magician probably could, looks like he couldn't even juggle one ball. And a good magician. Um, his first trick is taking these eggs, putting them. To, I don't even know how this trick is supposed to go. I'm not a big magic guy, but he puts the e the eggs into his hat. Says Abracadabra. Flips it over, and as logic would predict, they fall out. If you have studied or had had those magic kits that they've sell before, exactly what's the trick supposed to be? They don't fall out, I guess. That'd be a logical thing. Um, he then tries to get the rabbit Hocus Pocus out of his hat, which he can't find somehow, even though it's just a hat. That kind of does um. Uh, show that the hat probably is magic since if you can't find a rabbit in a s hat you have problems um, the teacher lets them out for I guess the day since they never go back to school I guess for Christmas break of course they had the fun in the snow the, and just because I'm probably such a sick twisted guy I now can't hear this line without hearing some screwed up crap in my head. They say to the, the only character with a name other than Frosty, they say to Car this girl Carol, we're building a snowman and Carol, you make the head. She goes, the head is the most difficult part. Ask anyone. Maybe just because I'm 21 and twisted in the my head, but is that a dirty joke? I hope not. I wanted at least one thing from childhood to stay pure. They then, after they build Frosty, they go over names for him. And there was one that really just, I always just laugh at. They, one of the kids, very little kid, like very lower grade, I guess, asks, says to name him Oatmeal. That's the kid who gets hit in the head with snowballs a lot. <laughs> so then the hat comes fr with Hocus wearing the hat over his body. Jumps, the hat flies off, and of course we get the infamous, the famous line of Frosty saying, Happy Birthday. They realize the hat is magic, and jackass magician Professor Hinkle wants it back after throwing it away. The kids point this out, saying it doesn't belong to him since he threw it away. And the selfish magician thinks... This is the thing, though. He thinks the hat, just because the hat is magic, it can make him a millionaire magician. Here's my thing. Just because you're you, uh, 
Just because your utensil is magic as a magician doesn't mean you're less shitty. He's still a horrible magician, magic hat or not. Uh, so they look the Frosty back to re -anim to back to just a snowman. They say they knew he came to life, and then we get uh, open with the credits. Uh, Hocus whops his hat with a Christmas wreath, which I think you would instantly know, I guess, of being replaced with his hat. I don't know, I just think I could tell the difference between a top hat and a Christmas wreath on my head. Lucas runs, ba races back to the kid, they put the hat on him, and Frosty comes back to life. And questions if it's just a joke or if he actually is alive. They have a one minute song. I have the little song celebration. Then instantly he, like it goes from, <laughs> it could go from like, it went from like 20 degrees to looking about like 50. It's heating up. I'm guessing this, well it would be December 25th so it would be getting close. Well, actually no. Because it would be getting close to January which would mean it would be getting cold. It would still be getting cold. So they make a parade out of going to the tr the um so the kids have the idea to put him on a train because he says the only place he could never melt is the North Pole. They get down to the train station after interacting and probably costing a cop hundreds of dollars worth of a hospital bill. They explain to because Frosty doesn't know what a traffic light is or a lamppost. So the kids explain to him he doesn't know much because he just came to life. The cop says, "Okay, sure, he just came to life. Move along." He then clicks in his head that they just said the snowman came to life. And he then swallows his traffic whistle. I would love to see the hospital bill that this guy had to endure. <laughs> then we come to the character I felt the most sorry for in this movie. The ticket maker at the train station. Because the kids tell him, or ask him, that they'd like a ticket to the North Pole. He goes crazy making this thing to where it's a $3,000 ticket. It's like this big of a train ticket. I think he, it's either three, no, it is $3,000, I believe. They, they say, the kids then say, of course, that they don't have any money on them. It's supposed to be $3,000. I have to feel so bad for this guy because he just spent. So many, because this would take a long time, no matter what animation would say. He's been so long making this ticket, and he can't sell it. That has to suck, man. The kids didn't think there's no way to get him to the North Pole, and he'll eventually melt. But then Hocus, um, shows that he can get onto a refrigerated boxcar. Which, which is filled with frozen Christmas treats and stuff like that. So, Hocus Frosty get on the train. He asks Carol if she's going to the North Pole, too. She then says a line that I love commenting on. She says, she's sure her mother, she's sure her mother wouldn't mind as long as she's back in time for supper. Kid, are you paying attention in geometry class to where you know the distance between wherever your town is and the North Pole? North Pole is on the top of the world, man. You ain't gonna make it back in time for supper. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Some of you may say, oh, it's an old movie from the freaking 60s or something. It doesn't mean I can't point out its flaws when it's made, or just stuff that's weird writing. It's a freaking movie a special about a freaking talking snowman. You really want to point out logic in this? <laughs> I just do it for fun. Anyway, moving on. Karen, of course, gets... Uh, a cold while Professor Hinkle holds on to the bottom of the train like an idiot. That could kill a man. And Frosty realizes he has to get Carol out of a car or she will most likely freeze to death. So the little train they're holding, they're riding on stops to let an express engine move. They hop off and then Professor Hinkle says, You tricked me! No fair! You know what fair is, jackass. So he jumps and most likely gives himself a concussion. <laughs> I mean, he's jumping off a moving train, hits his head, falls down a hill, and bang into a tree. As Karen continues to get more cold, continues to get colder, while being ha well, a by being carried by a snowman in the middle of wind, in a split, basically blizzard, 
Frosty and Hocus come across a, a um, clearing in the forest of Christmas animals, mainly just deer, or squirrels, birds, decorating the forest for Christmas. So they, and Frosty asks Hocus to ask the animals if they can build a fire for Karen. They do, and so Karen can warm up and most likely survive and not die of hypothermia. And go the way of that bitch in Friday the 13th, Jason X. Remember when he dunks her head in the liquid nitrogen and instant death? So Frosty and Hocus discuss that they need someone to both help Karen get home, get her home, because, uh, else she will, as I said, most likely die, and help get him to the North Pole. Hocus suggests the Marines and the President of the United States. Um, I don't think either of them would help because they think they're tripping balls. So he finally comes up with Santa Claus. So Ho he tells Ho Frosty tells Hocus to wait with the animals and then direct him, direct Santa Claus when he arrives to Frosty. Sounds like a good plan. So far, so good. Then all of a sudden, while Karen's still warm up behind the fire near the fire, Professor Hinkle shows up, and this is where I say this magician asshole is one of the best underrated under radar villains, because he says, "Oh, a campfire! Isn't that all warm and comfy?" <laughs> He blows out the fire that's basically keeping this girl alive. He is willing to murder this child. Essentially. To get this stupid hat. And that is insane, man. The Frosty Karen escaped by Frosty Belly racing on his, down the hill. Leading to one of my favorite... My one of my favorite scenes in this movie that's Professor Hinkle running down the mountain looking like an idiot. They then come across this is where the mo this is the ending of the movie. Um or I can't, I keep saying movie it's the end of the special where it really gets me a little irritated. And I'll explain why. They at the bottom of the hill they find a greenhouse. That way they can probably think that's a great way to warm her up. She says that he'll melt if he goes in there. He makes a joke that he's been meaning to take off a little weight anyway. Good joke. It then Im starts immediately starts melting, sweating in the greenhouse. Not even ten seconds later, Professor Hinkle somehow catches up to them and slams the door shut, saying, "Once you're melted, the hat will be mine." Santa then appears, and they say, and Hulk is explaining to him while the narrator saying that he can, that Santa can explain, can speak a fluent rabbit. They follow the trail that Frosty left belly slaying, and then they come to the sight of a melted Frosty with Karen crying over him, over his hat and his pipe. At this little, mon this little two-second montage, two-minute montage, or not even two minutes, like a thirty-second montage of. What we'd already seen in the movie in the beginning, the first act, first scene, and Santa saying it's not too late, saying that Christmas still can never disappear fully, and this is where it gets interesting. This is where it pisses me off. Santa opens the door of the greenhouse where Frosty melted from the inside. The door opens from the inside. Let's think about this, okay? Frosty melted in the greenhouse because the door was shut on him, but the door opens from the inside. So, it's essentially, Frosty committed, to said, eh, I'm just gonna die. I know it's a, a special about Christmas snow and stuff like that, about magic and stuff like that, but you have to assess this. When you rewatch it, you have to think about this. You put these little things in your mind, you'll love it still, but as you continue watching, you notice little things in writing, and that's one of them. That the door opens from the inside. Anyway. Alright, so it comes back to life. Retsa Hinkles once again, for the last time, tries to steal the hat, and Santa threatens him not to touch the hat, and Hinkle says probably one of the dumbest lines in the movie, the dumbest line in the movie, to Santa's face, just what are you going to do about it? He's Santa Claus, bitch! Santa threatens to never give him a present again, and he says again, this is the second dumbest line in the movie, That's not fair. We evil magicians gotta make a living, too. 
here's my thing. If you're evil, then you'd be on the naughty list, right? I don't know. He then tells Hinkel if he writes a hundred billion times that he's sorry for what he did to Frosty, he might give him a present. He might find something in his stocking tomorrow morning. So it would, it would be Christmas Eve that this thing was in. Okay. Um, puts the hat on Frosty. He goes like, like we have the celebration. Frosty, Santa brings Fro jumps Karen off on her roof. Thanks, pal. And also at least the, one of the weirdest sounds of them in the special when she runs and hugs it Frosty one more time. And if you know, if you've seen this special, you know what's, and if you don't know what sound I'm talking about, rewatch this and watch that last clip of Karen uh, saying goodbye to Frosty. It's such a weird sound effect. Takes Frosty home. We have the last piece of the song. Happy ending. It's a good special. It's something that you... It's definitely on probably everyone's watch list when Christmas time rolls around. And I... I've watched it every day for like the past like two weeks. Because I have this playlist called Christmas Past. Where it's just a bunch of old school cartoons. Old specials of Christmas time. But Frosty's the most irritating one because it would be like, God damn, two minutes. It's a freaking ad. So I have to keep the, my phone, which I have, and plus my ear, ear behads, which I won in a raffle at work. I have to keep this phone right next to me in a cart that I use to deliver dishes where, because of my dish, blah, blah, blah. I have to keep this damn thing right next to me so I can just click skip ad every, like, two minutes or something like that. Anyway, um... Plus, if I remember, if I remember correctly, this has a Frosty has a Rotten Tomato score. And I think it's in the nineties. I think. Um. So yeah, that does it for December's cringe of the month. That actually does it for the last cringe of the month for twenty twenty. And I'll say it one last time. This month, I got two words for it. Suck it. Later, guys.